Hello everyone, my name is Vic and I'm a freelance illustrator and art ambassador for Royal Talents. I'm here today to talk to you about the features and properties of the FineTech watercolor line. Here's what we're going to be painting today, but first let's do a quick overview about the paints. FineTech paints are handcrafted in Germany under very strict quality standards. They incorporate the use of rare pigments and microformulations to produce intense and beautiful effects. Not only are they highly pigmented, but they are also lightfast and archival. They have a gum Arabic binder, which makes them very compatible with other watercolors. Notice their unique ripple pattern in each pan, which is a byproduct of being hand poured. Another wonderful feature is that FineTech is an environmentally responsible company. Not only are their paints completely free of animal byproducts, but they are sold in tin pellets that are refillable, reusable, and customizable. So now that we know the basics, let's paint. Here are the supplies that we will be using today. A custom set of 12 fine tech paints, which I'll go over in more detail about the colors I selected later, some silicone brushes, Talon's liquid masking film, a white colored pencil, a water mister, Amsterdam acrylic ink in both titanium white and oxide black. We also have some black Rembrandt watercolor paper. I'll be using masking tape to stretch my image. And then also Neptune brushes by Princeton. I used a white watercolor pencil to sketch my image, but you can also use white transfer paper. In order to preserve areas of the black paper, I'm applying Frisket, also known as liquid masking fluid, over the stripes. Fine tech can be quite opaque on black paper, and so the frisket allows us to focus on applying our colors and building up our midtones and highlights without worrying too much about our complex black stripes. To do this, I'm just using a silicone brush. These are perfect for frisket as they can be wiped off when you're finished using them, and they come in a variety of different precise shapes. While our frisket dries, I wanted to talk a little bit about our palette here. I've chosen a variety of different types and colors of fine tech mostly pearlescent, but I have also included one neon orange, an iridescent blue, and a flip-flop color named patina. All of these types can be mixed interchangeably for different effects. As you can see, it's pretty simple to build your own custom palette. All you have to do is pop your pans in and out. We also have all this room up here for mixing colors but I do also like to use it um, storage-wise with just a little swatch sheet that I've made of my colors. This is especially helpful for black watercolor paper as the colors tend to look a little bit different than they do on the white. Before painting, I always spray my dry pans with some water. Any sort of water mister will work just fine. Some people also prefer eyedroppers, but Having that water permeate into our dry pan is really going to help with color payoff later on. Let's start off by plugging in our midtones. I'm going to be using the colors on the left side of my swatch sheet and painting right over top of our dried frisket. I'm using an oval wash brush as I'm able to use the tip for details or apply pressure and be able to quickly block in larger areas. At this point, I'm mixing the colors I need in the lid of my palette. Painting on black watercolor paper is the opposite of painting on white, so by adding more water, you'll end up with darker tones of your color. In addition, it will make the metallic more subtle the more water that is added. Before the next step, I want to make sure that my midtones are all plugged in. I'm even beginning to add a bit of the neon orange to add some more saturation for clarity. The neon orange does not have any metallic in it, so it will help break up some of that metallic sheen that will be seen throughout. It's a bit hard to see the metallic qualities through the camera, but at the end of the video, I'll be doing some close-ups so you'll be able to see it a bit better. Normally, I would wait to remove the frisket after adding shadows and highlights. However, for this illustration, and even more particularly when painting fur, I want the stripes to be less of a blocky graphic shape. So in order to soften them, I'll just need to place brush strokes feathering over the edges. So here I'm using something called a pickup tool to remove the frisket, but you can gently remove it by just rolling your fingers over the surface. Make sure your paint is completely dry. Because of Fintech's gum Arabic binder, 
Um, it's very compatible with other water-based medias. So here I'm going to be mixing it with titanium white and oxide black Amsterdam acrylic ink. It is very opaque, but you could also use gouache or if you have an opaque watercolor, uh, that would work just fine. So we're going to be mixing this with our Fine Tech paints. But I'm just going to be mixing that directly onto my palette. One thing to keep in mind is it's also going to give our metallics a little bit more of a matte sheen. So it will dilute that metallic, but what it's going to do is really up the contrast. So we're able to get some really striking bright whites and some really dark blacks as well. The black actually sits really nicely on this paper, so it will allow the illustration to kind of come in and out of the black areas of the paper with the ink. Now you don't have to mix this with ink if you don't want to, of course. It's just something I like to do because I think that it really helps the metallics stand out when there are different levels of metallic throughout. Uh, because the Fine Tech paints are very striking, of course. They have that really bold metallic look to them. But when you mix in a little bit of a matte uh, to help with your tones and values, really amp up that contrast, you end up with a lot of variety. And I think that that helps, especially when you're painting something a little bit more natural, like a tiger. Now we are at the point where the illustration's colors are blocked in, but it still needs some refinement. The edges of all the fur needs work to look fluffier, and we need to tighten up some areas such as the features on the face, like the eyes and the nose. The second pass over the edges will help enforce the texture of the fur against the really smooth, clean edges of the eyes and the nose. I'm brushing into the black stripes with my pearlescent gold and a touch of black ink combo. I'm also following the perimeter of the tiger's head and placing more fur strokes into the background. This will help break up the line of negative space. So I thought for this piece it would be fun to do some whimsical touches. So here I'm just using a flip-flop color called Patina um, for the leaves, and it kind of shifts colors between green and gold. Next, I'm using the iridescent blue, which shows up best on black background. Next, I'm adding a little bit of neon, um, actually each of the colors from the Neon Fine Tech palette. And this is just to help pump up all the saturation on my colors. I like my illustrations to be very vibrant. I'll use an eraser to get rid of any extra colored pencil lines I have. And then here is the final illustration. So I'm going to hold it up a little closer to the camera here so that you can see that metallic watercolor in action. I still feel like you can't see all of its beauty. Um, it really is gorgeous in person, but hopefully you can kind of get some of the idea here. And definitely, you know, as you look at it close up, take a look at the areas where you can really see the metallic layered up and then some of the areas where they're a little bit more subtle and that is the push and pull of the ink combined with that pearlescent so if you wanted to you could do this entire painting on white paper um, you know it would work pretty much the same you would just need to plug in your black stripes and hopefully this gives you some ideas of tips and techniques that you can use in your own artwork. So I had a lot of fun painting today and talking about my process. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed it too. So regardless of what you took away from our brief time together, I hope that it encourages you to branch out and try using Fine Tech in some of your own illustrations. Thanks so much for watching.